All right, well, it's a few minutes after. Um, maybe a few people join in late, but uh, we'll go ahead and get the, the meeting started. Thanks for those that um, are able to attend today. Um, I'm sure there's a few folks that are busy with things going on, uh, especially in the fire world. Um, but thanks for those that uh, could make it, appreciate it. Um, Boone is also on a fire assignment. Uh, he'll be coming back from the Mosier Creek fire tomorrow. Uh, so I'm kind of flying this thing on my own today. Uh, uh, and um, for those that weren't on when I uh, first gave the welcome, uh, if you could introduce yourself through chat uh, so folks know uh, that you're here and we can capture you for the minutes. I appreciate it. Um, I assume folks, uh, if you wanted to take a, took a look at the notes, did anybody have uh, just a quick call for anybody that either had a clarification or questions or a correction to those notes? Anybody? Okay. Uh, if, you, if you do have uh, anything, be sure to send them my way or Boone's way and we'll get those uh, corrected and then posted to the website. Uh, those, those minutes are posted to the Project Wildfire uh, website once we get those completed. Um, just a quick program update of a few things that Boone and I have been working on. Uh, first off is the, the community wildfire protection plans. Uh, after a delay, um, we were able to get the, Lapine, the Greater Lapine Community Wildfire Protection Plan signed. Um, we actually started that uh, a while back in at the very end of uh, 2019 and kind of put it on hold uh, due to um, kind of restrictions in, in, in public meetings and the need to get it in front of both the city council and the board of county commissioners. Um, we were able to do that in a joint meeting and then uh, followed up with the signature. So that's been fully signed now. Um, we haven't posted the, the uh, we haven't taken the watermark off the one on the, the, the version on the web yet, but we'll do that here uh, shortly um, as we just collected those signatures here last week. So uh, we're putting the Lapine one behind us. Uh, the Sun River uh, CWPP uh, is out for a 30 day review. Um, that's on the Project Wildfire website, projectwildfire.org. And then if you go along the top uh, to community wildfire protection plans, uh, you'll be able to find that uh, community wildfire protection plan. If you want to give that a glance or a read and uh, send us any uh, revisions or um, or uh, anything that we may have uh, missed, we can still add add those on. But I, that's that's for all intents and purposes. Um, I think we're pretty close to a final draft with that. Um, I think we'll be running that through the end of this month, uh, the month of August. Uh, and then collecting signatures on uh, the Sun River Community Wildfire Protection Plan. So that, those were our two uh, plans on the calendar for this year. Um, and it's nice to have both of those coming either completed or, or pretty close to. Um, in uh, FireWise news, uh, we have a, Boone and I uh, kind of ran down a whole list of communities that have expressed some level of interest in, in FireWise either they already have their assessment done to, to just, yeah, I'm interested, um, but don't know where to start yet. It uh, looks like we, I last count on that list. Um, we have about 14 different communities at various stages of um, working through the firewise recognition process. So that's, that's good to see the continued interest in communities uh, for that program. Um, so we're sitting at about, depending on, where, where a couple of them were that were, were pending uh, final approval with the National Fire Protection Association, right around 40 plus or minus a couple. Um, and so it, it's looking like in the next uh, year or so that we'll be hitting that, that benchmark of about 50 different uh, firewise communities throughout Deschutes County. So that's great to see those uh, progressing. Um, uh, let's see. Yesterday, uh, FEMA was in town. They, uh, we, Deschutes County applied for a grant we were eligible for through their uh, hazard mitigation grant program. 
uh, back in 2018. We finally have heard back from them and that grant is moving forward. Uh, they have to actually write an environmental assessment before they can fund that grant and that's what they'll be doing uh, with some cultural resource surveys uh, and a public involvement process. Um, they'll be doing their, their scoping here probably in the next two weeks. Uh, with that, hope to come to a decision by the end of uh, the year uh, or first of next year. Uh, and so by spring of 2021, that, that grant hopefully will be funded and we'll be doing some uh, work. Uh, all the project areas are in the greater uh, Redmond Community Wildfire Protection Plan area. Um, and then finally, uh, for those that uh, didn't see it, I just wanted to be sure that everybody um, knew of our um, our community wildfire grants uh, were open for another round. We, op we offered the last round or the, yeah, the first round of those was offered last year. Uh, and I'll just bring that up. It is uh, posted on the Deschutes County webpage. Um, so last year, the board uh, for the first time uh, funded a program uh, that was aimed at uh, fuel reduction in communities. Um, we were giving preference to folks that have organized under the Firewise uh, USA program uh, for a few reasons. One is to encourage people to, um, to get organized and use that as a model, but also the fact that those communities hopefully already have that capacity uh, and are ready to do projects. Uh, we did 18 different projects last year for $40,000. Uh, the uh, funding's down a little bit this year due to the, the decrease in lottery revenue to the county, but we did, the board did decide to fund that again this year, which I'm grateful for. Um, so we've got $20,000 available for communities to propose projects. Um, those are due uh, at the end of September. Um, we, I am hosting a couple different uh, online kind of question and answer sessions for communities. The first one's actually tomorrow, um, and then we'll have one on the 24th as well, and those will be about an hour or so just to give uh, communities that uh, may have questions uh, help in drafting their, their proposals there. Uh, they're not large grants, but they seem to be uh, pretty popular and go a long way uh, in uh, this last round that we just closed out. <clears throat> I've got a couple communities still finishing a couple projects um, but let's see, so 16 of the 18 have, have reported, um, out of the $40,000 of funding, we had about $125,000 of match, uh, that included cash match as well as people's time. Uh, it, it involved over 300 properties, uh, that participated in, in that, in, in the 18 different neighborhoods so far, and we still have a couple more projects to come in. So. Uh, it involved a lot of people, and I really appreciate those of you that um, facilitated those projects and would encourage uh, anybody from communities that are thinking about putting together a project that uh, sign up for one of those. If you have questions of that, or you can always just reach out to me with, with any questions. Um, I will um, post uh, the, the web address in the chat, um, just in case people want to um, refer to that um, and there's links to sign up uh, for or register for one of the two meetings if you want to uh, attend and ask any questions um, and with that that is my uh, program update for August so uh, I will just pause and see if anybody has questions on any of the things that I covered and feel free to just unmute and uh, Okay, don't see anything. So uh, <clears throat> with that, then I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I am going to give a quick introduction to Alex Anna. Um, <clears throat> Alex is joining us today to give us a, a brief uh, uh, overview and maybe refresher uh, and update on what's happening with the prescribed fire program on the Deschutes National Forest. Uh, I know that uh, we're hot and heavy into fire season and lots of things um, going on in that regard. But before you know it, we'll be right in the thick of uh, hopefully some fall uh, burning. Um, and then um, 
or you know be rolling into spring and, and interested to hear from Alex about um, current uh, current plans for the prescribed fire program. Uh, and this is also going to feed into next month's topic as well uh, a, a little bit. So uh, um, with that, I will turn it over to Alex. And I think Alex, if you do need to share your screen, you should be able to, but if you can't, right. let me know. Yeah. So um, yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Enna. I'm the fuels program manager for the Deschutes National Forest. Um, and uh, yeah, Boone and Ed were just looking for an update on the prescribed fire season and the program. And um, so I put together a few slides and pictures to share with everyone. And then um, we should have plenty of time at the end if there's any questions about what we have going on and, and what our prescribed fire program looks like. So I'm gonna share this PowerPoint. All right, um, so I wanna just begin with a few, um, I was just gonna go through an overview of our program, um, spend some time talking about some of our current projects. Um, and then um, we recently had a, a, a great success story with the Roslyn Road fire. So I wanted to share some information on that in a, a short video. And then um, talk a little bit how it works when uh, the Forest Service does work on private lands or non-federal lands, and then uh, just uh, review some of our upcoming prescribed fire projects that, uh, that everyone can be seeing in the, in the future. And so uh, just to kick it off, uh, as far as what our program looks like and where we're going, like how much do we underburn each year? So, um, you know, usually, uh, you know, we've been kind of hovering around 5,000 acres of you a year of underburning. Um, the orange is the Benfort Rock Ranger District, the gray is the Crescent Ranger District, and the yellow is the Sisters Ranger District. So, you know, of that of around 5,000 acres, most of that has been, or a little over half has been on the Benfort Rock uh, Ranger District, and then the remainder shared between Crescent and Sisters. Um, and really then, and then 2019, we had a, a really, as far as acres burned, we had a, a pretty big year. And a lot of that was due to, um, a lot of projects that the Benfort Rock was working on way out on the east side of the district. So even though, uh, you know, big acres, a lot of that burning, um, you know, that, that increase was in an area that's not, not a lot of people uh, really noticed the smoke or the activity out there, but um, a really a great year in 2019 for um, prescribed fire. And then of course, you know, this year with, uh, we had a regional pause on prescribed burning and um, we really only had a fall a fall burn program and um, so pretty pretty minimal and um, for 2020 and, and I'll kind of get into what the the future looks like with us and the uh, with under burning during the um, the COVID pandemic. Uh, I also want to talk about like so who does the under burning and so so really you know we're we're broken out into to three districts on the forest um, and the planning and implementation is is coordinated at the at the district level. You know, really, you know, my job uh, working for the forest. You know, I kind of operate the phone and the spreadsheets essentially. Like I, I just do a lot of the coordination type work um, and the budget type work, but all the, the planning implementation happens at the district level, and that's um, and really it's by the same uh, firefighters who are out there, um, you know, doing initial attack and working on fires right now. So that is our prescribed fire workforce is the the wildland firefighter folks. And then um, we also, we have a, on the forest, we hold a contract to bring in um, contract crews and engines. And that's been a, a super uh, valuable uh, capacity builder over the last few years. And of course, these crews and engines are also the same firefighters that you'll see out um, fighting fires right now. Um, we have a, a program that's been um, going on for several years now called the Prescribed Fire Training Ex Exchange or TREX. And this is, uh, through an agreement with the, the Nature Conservancy. And usually uh, end of April, early May, uh, we bring in you know, 35 to 40 folks from across the nation and actually even some international folks to kind of learn about prescribed fire and assist with uh, implementation on, a, on a burning across the forest. 
across the forest. So really it's a kind of a, a training opportunity, but also like a, a great capacity builder for us for getting work done. Um, we've also held an agreement with uh, ODF. So we've been able to utilize some of their resources, uh, usually their engines uh, to help with prescribed burning. And then of course, with uh, especially with a lot of our burning done closer to Bend and Sisters, uh, the local fire departments have helped out and brought some folks in to both to kind of learn about prescribed fire, to help them with some training and, and also, you know, assist us with the burning. And then um, we also, you know, a lot of our, um, especially with the prescribed burning work, a lot of our um, non-fire people, our wildlife biologists, our, um, our silviculturists, they'll, they'll come in and they'll help out with prescribed fire. They, you know, they might have some fire qualifications that allow them to come out and help us do some underburning. And then, um, and, and I'll just mention this, we also had recently, we've been able to, um, we've gained the use of ADs for prescribed fire and ADs are uh, essentially, they're administratively determined, I believe is what, what it stands for, but it's, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times on, um, you know, wildfires we use either, you know, the retired forest service employees or uh, maybe, you know, uh, firefighters who work for a structure fire department, but we have the ability um, through the Forest Service to bring them in and, and pay them to assist. And we re just recently gained that ability to do that on with prescribed fire, which is great because that means, uh, you know, some of these uh, folks who've recently re retired with a lot of prescribed fire qualifications and skills, um, they're now available to us to, to utilize on um, with burning, you know, outside of having to put a separate contract together. Um, a little bit on like when is our season? So, um, so really, like the the bulk of our prescribed burning is done in the um, you know in the spring in April and May, and then um, October is our, our big month in the fall. Um, and so, what this graph has is these are the actual um, prescribed fire operations by month. So, by operation, I mean uh, actual burn days um, when we actually uh, uh, have ignitions on a prescribed fire. And so really like, you know, May is by, by far is our, um, you know, is our biggest month. And typically we'll, uh, you know, January, February, March, those are really uh, just because of the weather. We don't, um, those are typically our pile burning seasons. And then um, early April is generally when we start kicking off the prescribed fire and that kind of ramps up. Um, and uh, probably the, the peak of prescribed fire season is usually in that last week of April and um, early to mid-May and then it kind of tapers off and usually we'll be able to get some amount of burning done during uh, in early June and then of course July and August where uh, the focus is more on uh, on wildfires and then uh, usually by the end of September we'll start uh, looking at under burning again and then uh, you know throughout the month of October we're usually pretty busy with that and then usually by uh, by early November, we have um, some sort of a large, uh, you know, wedding rain or other weather event that kind of puts us out of prescription for, for any more uh, prescribed fire. And so as, as far as, you know, like, uh, as far as how much should we be burning each year, that's kind of a, it's a hard thing uh, to say, and this is a very simplified way to look at it. But, um, you know, if you, uh, if you look at the ponderosa pine uh, forest type, which most of our uh, wildland urban interface is in, and you and you uh, make the uh, you know we, you use the the standard uh, the fire the, the historic fire return interval will be anywhere from five to twenty five years, and you look at the the high end of that you know we sh um, you know like every twenty five years if we were to do some sort of burning in the ponderosa pine like we should be burning close to twenty thousand acres a a year. So really, like we, even though we had a great year in 2019 with over, you know, over 11,000 acres, we still have a ways to go to really ramp up to a, any sort of um, regime where we'd be matching the, uh, what was occurring historically. And, I, and as far as, um, I just want to kind of highlight this as far as, you know, what do we have upcoming for prescribed fire. There's, um, we've been um, hosting this on the Central Oregon Fire website and I'll just kind of navigate to that to show everyone how to get there and, and figure out what our burning plans are. 
So, um, I assume, are you guys seeing the Central Oregon Fire website up right now? Is that? It's uh, still your slide. You may have okay. to change your share. Yeah, I've got it. Okay, let me see. We'll go to, there we go. All right. Okay, you're good now. Great. So, um, so if you go to the Central Oregon Fire Info website, there's a, um, right now it's under the tab active fires, when and where is prescribed fire expected. scroll down and we and we've been maintaining a um an interactive map on where these locations are so you, you at the beginning of each prescribed fire season will the districts will submit their planned burning um and these are placed on this interactive map and like for example if uh you want to see what's happening in your bend you have the option to kind of scroll in and you can see that uh you know, right in the, the Phil's uh, trailhead area, we have a, a, a burn unit there planned um, and available for either fall or spring prescribed fire. And so usually when they're, when they're green, it's showing um, all the, what's, uh, uh, what's being considered for burning. And then when we get into the prescribed fire season, those, those dots or those units will, um, will, uh, turn red, we'll turn those on as red, showing that they're an active unit that we're either actively uh, burning or is, uh, you know, it's still we, we burned recently. And then um, as the mop up and everything gets completed, we'll, we'll show those in the black, meaning they're completed. So this is a, a super useful tool for, uh, you know, if, if you have questions about where we're burning and what our plans are and what has recently been burned, um, this is a great map and you can, um, Yes, super useful in that you can drill down to the actual kind of the, the unit shape and the exact location. Just want to share that with everyone. And so um, as far as, uh, I, also said, I also wanted to highlight one of our recent, um, you know, success stories with both, you know, fire suppression and, and prescribed fire. And that's the Roslyn Road fire from uh, mid-July. Um, you know, we'll have a, our public information officers put together a great video that kind of uh, talks about the, the story behind that. But um, just briefly before I share the video is that, you know, we had a, you know, fire right, you know, near Newberry Estates, um, threatening the subdivision, um, is on one of those kind of hot and dry days with a little bit of wind. And, um, uh, you know, essentially one of our recent prescribed fire burn units um, was critical in, in stopping that fire and protecting the subdivision. And this was in the recently, uh, it was in the just east of Lapine and what we, what we call the Odin prescribed fire burn blocks. So let me bring this video up. Don't think we're getting any sound. Out. No? Okay, I, wonder, I was wondering if that'd be a problem. Try and change the video settings.
No sound right now? Nope. I might, um, always something with technology, huh? Yeah, I might, I think, uh, yeah, we'll just, um, I, I honestly don't know how to get the video, um, via Zoom on, on these, but um, i definitely share that link yeah. after the meeting. Okay, that'd be great. I heard someone yeah. jump in there. We will, um, yeah, we'll share that link out. Um, does look like I was just noticing that uh, had over 6,000 views so far. No, it's not been out that long. So looking like that is uh, out, getting out to folks. And uh, I, I have watched that. That's still a good story. So I'd encourage yeah. folks when we get the link to take a quick look at it. It's not too long of a video. Yeah, it's a very short video and, and really like a, a great success story. And um, and Jeff Crawford, the Fuels AFMO on the Benport Rock Ranger District, he does a, a great job of kind of explaining the how the fire interacted with the fuels treatments and um, and there's some also some good kind of uh, uh, video footage of you know areas that were treated before the burn, before the fire, and, and uh, areas that were not treated and kind of the the difference in how those look. So you know, great video. Um, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about is just kind of, you know, this, uh, get lots of questions about what the planning, the plans are near Bend and what we've been doing, what our strategy is there. Um, and I assume you're all seeing the map of Bend right now. Yep. Yep. So this has been, this has been shared at a, a few other meetings, but, um, you know, really as far as in the, in the Bend, uh, wildland urban interface, uh, the strategy has really been just, just to build like a about a, you know, like a mile wide buffer on the outskirts of, of town, and um, a lot of that focus has been in this um, west uh, West Bend project area. So that's kind of that Phil's Trailhead area, and um, we've been working in there for close to five years now, and um, a lot of great work's been done. It is like a it's a challenge to to burn large units in there just simply because of the the smoke issues. Um, but uh, you know, every year we've been able, except for this last spring uh, when we were shut down due to due to COVID, uh, we've been uh, you know getting a, at least two or three burn blocks done each year, and over time we've we've done a established a pretty good um, um, block of, of burning on the both the west and the south side of town. Um, I'd like to you know highlight that you know we've as part of that uh, strategy we've been doing a lot of uh, mixed ownership burning. Um, on the Shovelin Park area. And then um, we've also done some work down near the High Desert Museum. And how these are um, uh, completed is like we, as, as a Forest Service, we have authority under the, the Widen Amendment to go and enter into participating agreements with, with uh, other landowners to do work on non-federal lands. And that can include, um, you know, it can include everything from invasive species work to, um, you know, to thinning work. But um, you know, we've been using it quite a bit uh, recently, just for for prescribed burning, and that's how we were able to do work in the High Desert Museum. Um, we had an agreement with with Jeff and Ben Parks and Recreation District for burning in Shevlin Park. Um, we were uh, we have some current agreements in place with some other private landowners uh, adjacent to the High Desert Museum, and then. Um, and prior to and prior to uh, COVID kind of interrupting things, we've been uh, having a lot of great discussions with some of the landowners on the north side of Shevlin Park to do, do some burning out there. So that is like a, an excellent tool that we have available to us to do work um, across boundaries, and um, you know, a really important part of our strategy for for uh, doing as much as we can to reduce fuels in the in the urban interface surrounding Bend and Sisters for that matter. And then, um, so I'd like to end with just talking about some of our upcoming projects that people should be kind of keep on their radar. So one of the, um, the big ones is, uh, is Cabin Butte. And this is a, it's a, it's overlap. We've done a lot of burning out there just like kind of right along the, 
the uh, the private uh, federal land boundary on the southeast side of Bend and Cabin Butte kind of takes that burning um, will be uh, and uh, expands it to include a lot of the China Hat Road area and uh, essentially a, a big part of the Bend Fort Rock Ranger District where we have a lot of um, kind of those human caused fires a lot of you know folks out in the woods out there um, really an area that's been identified as a you know as a problem just with a large number of human caused starts so I have a lot of uh, fuels reduction work including prescribed burning planned under this project um, this is the planning should be complete in uh, next year and then with implementation starting um, shortly after that and the other and the other one that um, I'd like to highlight is the twin project and this is um, this is out by Wikiup and Crane Prairie Reservoir. It's a 40,000 acre project area. Um, planning's been going on for um, three years now. It's a pretty complex project with lots of, uh, with uh, some high value spotted owl habitat, um, lots of recreation going on, um, several popular resorts and a couple major roadways that provide access to that the Cascade Lakes area. And, um, and so we're, this is scheduled to be completed in 20, um, 22, 2022, the planning part with implementation beginning in, in 2023. And this is another project where, you know, large, large amounts of underburning planned, um, especially near, you know, some of the resorts, uh, you know, around uh, the, the Twin Lakes and then on the east side of Crane Prairie. And, um, and a lot of burning planned along the, the 42 road up in that area. So um, this is another, you know, project that I'm, you know, I'm excited to see uh, get off the ground and get some work done in. It's, uh, you know, kind of a huge need. It's another area, especially on the, on that west side of Wikiup where we have a lot of human caused fires and it'd be, uh, it's gonna be excellent to get some more fuels reduction work done. And lastly, I just want to highlight, and I know there's a, a, a few folks at the meeting today who've been a, a big part of this project is that we were currently um, putting together a, a it's basically a competitive funding request through the Joint Chiefs program um, and it's called Buttes to Basins. So it's been, um, we've been having meetings and discussions on this since the beginning of the year with, uh, with the Forest Service, with uh, NRCS, ODF, uh, Deschutes County and amongst others. I know Todd, you're part of all these uh, doing, um, putting together a proposal for Joint Chiefs funding um, for a, a three-year time frame from 21 through 23. And the project area is, you know, a big focus on the that mixed ownership area between Bend and Sisters and kind of surrounding Tumlo there. And um, we're highlighting three priorities with this, the watershed restoration, improve, improving upland wildlife habitat and increasing fire resiliency. Um, and so this is, you know, kind of a, this could be up to, you know, on the Forest Service side, um, $2 million a year for, for work. Um, in that area and, and, um, and uh, NRCS side, you know, um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what our exact amount we're going to request is, but there's there's several hundred thousand dollars available to do work if we're successful on the NRCS side. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, this would begin in 2021 if we're, if, we're, um, if we're successful with this project. So with that, I, I'm, uh, that's all I have for, um, for slides, I just want to kind of highlight as far as you know where we're at with uh, with burning right now and, and going into the fall is that we're currently uh, awaiting direction from our regional office on if we'll continue with a prescribed fire pause similar to the spring. Um, I know it sounds like uh, you know there's a uh, there's support for for pile burning, but uh, as far as under burning, especially under burning near um, near any sort of smoke sensitive areas, there's a lot of hesitation with that just given the the current um, state we're in with the with the pandemic and so kind of you know I don't have any any solid news on that but um, you know there's we're waiting direction on that on if if we will have a fall burn season or not um, and I guess you know I imagine if we do it'll probably be limited to those areas kind of outside of the urban interface and kind of in those um, areas either on the east side of the Ben Fort Rock or down near Crescent or some of these areas we're not where we're not going to impact communities with smoke and then, um, and heading into the spring, that's a, that's also you know that's all completely dependent on what um, 
what happens with COVID and um, what happens there. But, um, you know, as far as like what our plans are, it's, it's uh, we're, we're kind of like, we don't have any brand new projects on board right now. So we're, we're kind of, we're, a lot of our work is focused in those areas where we've been working over the last several years. So lots, lots of burning still continuing in the West Bend area. Um, there's a, a burn plan um, in the works for, uh, for on the south side of Widgee Creek. Um, there's continued burning planned in the Welcome Station area off of Cascade Lakes Highway. Uh, there's a few more uh, blocks of burning planned uh, that need to be completed just uh, by on the west side of Tethero. Um, Sisters has uh, continued burning in that in their safer area, their Sisters area fuel reduction project. So lots of burning near Sisters um, and along Highway 20. There's um, uh, near Lapine. We we still have the project the the Odin burn blocks. There's still more of that planned for for the fall and um, spring if 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 able. Um, and then as far as on the that southeast side of town, like a lot of that burning were Besides for some some plans near the, with the High Desert Museum, we're almost uh, wrapped up with all that. So um, that you know we'll really the the burning in the along um, China Hat Road. That's uh, you know as soon as that Cabin Butte project is up and running, that's when we'll continue a lot of that work. So for now, it's really kind of limited to the High Desert Museum and some of that adjacent forest there. So with that, that's all I have for information and slides. If if um, I'm you know, happy to answer any questions that folks might have. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, uh, anybody that has questions for Alex, uh, just feel free to come off of uh, uh, mute and ask those uh, questions. And I would just note that um, Allison did uh, post a link to that uh, video that was made on the Roslyn Road fire uh, in the chat box as well. So you can grab that link. Bob, you have a question? Yeah, Alex, uh, <clears throat> I'm at the Mountain High subdivision, which is just north of the uh, Cabin Butte project. And I know there are a lot of <clears throat> other representatives uh, usually on this call that also have subdivisions that are close to that project. How are you gonna deal with all the homeless people that are now residing out there when you do these burns? Yeah, so, um, you know that's uh, that is like that's definitely an issue, and it's not a it's not a new issue. Um, you know we've done quite a bit of burning out there already as part of that South Bend project, right. and um, you know it, it requires usually three to four days in advance. Uh, the we'll have fire folks and our law enforcement go out and start kind of uh, knocking on trailer doors or knocking on tents and letting folks know that uh, you know what's going to happen and what the plans are, and that they're within the you know middle of a burn unit. And, um, and that's usually, you know, that's, uh, that requires consistency for, you know, several days before the burn. And then, um, you know, that morning of before we implementation, they'll do another sweep of the area. And, um, you know, so far it's been pretty successful. There has been issues with, you know, there's a lot of uh, kind of tents, abandoned trailers and things like that, where, you know, there's no one there to, um, to move them. So we've, we've actually, uh, uh, we've paid towing companies to pull trailers out before we burn. Wow. We've um, we've gone out with uh, pickup trucks and like uh, you know some of those tents that have been abandoned for a while. We've cleaned those up and taken them you know to the dump. So um, it's uh, yeah it's it, it's it's definitely uh, it, it's an additional work an additional cost. But um, mm -hmm. I, I don't see that strategy changing. Yeah. Well, thank you. We're we're anxious to get that project underway. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great project, and that that area does need need more attention. Uh, in many ways, but especially on the fuels and prescribed fire part. Thank you so much. Great, anybody else have a question for Alex? Okay, Alex, it looks like you're off the hook, uh, right. but thank you. Um, uh, if, if, po if it's possible, Alex, it'd be nice to um, capture those slides just for the the minutes. I think there's some good graphs in there that uh, yeah, show the I can, I can progression. Of work. Okay, yeah. I'd appreciate that. I, I think people would uh, enjoy kind of looking looking over those uh, in a little more detail. Uh, so we'll share those out with the minutes if that's okay. Yep. Um, great. Um, 
All right, well, we will move into our, uh, just a quick round table. Uh, don't have a ton of people on today, so I will just work down my list. And if you, uh, I'll just uh, call on you if you could just introduce yourself to start off uh, and uh, share any um, updates you have for the group, uh, for the good of the order, or uh, um, that people might like to know what you're working on. Uh, I'd appreciate it. So let's start with uh, Allison today. Allison. Good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you that I haven't haven't seen in a while or haven't met yet, I'm Allison Green, and I'm the coordinator for Oregon Living with Fire. A um, couple of things that we've been working on. Um, we are working on putting together a cooperative video with Central Electric Co-op. Um, to talk about some of the fuel reduction work they are doing on the Sisters Ranger District. Um, so we're finalizing the script this week and then hopefully we'll start filming that um, depending on how the uh, the fire behavior and situations looking in Sisters. I know they have a couple going um, in some really steep terrain right now. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, with some of the conversations in um, California around utility companies and their role in FIRE. This is a cool, exciting opportunity for us that we have a utility company that's kind of taking the charge and the lead ahead of, um, you know, disaster essentially potentially being, being an issue. Um, another thing, we are working with both National Forests to put together a um, essentially a shared um, values list or prioritization list across the landscape around shared stewardship. Um, and then I think the final thing and a more personal thing is um, I'm starting to see some action in my own neighborhood around Firewise. Um, so I'm a Newberry Estates resident, so the Roslyn Road fire and a few fires in Lapine have been really, really close. Um, so there's always been kind of sporadic activity in my neighborhood, but we've had more of a sustained push. Um, along with, so Boone and Ariel with ODF have been, you know, Boone, of course, with Project Wildfire and Ariel with ODF have been helping us with that. Um, and I think so far this has been one of the longer sustained efforts I've seen um, around education from the road district. So I'm excited to see that as a, as a resident and somebody who was really excited to see that prescribed fire win in Newberry Estates. That's what I got for today. Um, all right, I guess I was muted. Thanks, Allison. Um, Boyd Turner, Resort at Eagle Crest. Any, any updates? From Good morning, everyone. Um, haven't been here for a while because of the COVID stuff, and um, but we're continuing our mostly educational work with our homeowners through newsletters and, and uh, personal contacts about the importance of uh, being firewise safe. And other than that, don't have a lot to report. Great, well, thanks for joining us, Boyd. It's good to see you again. Uh, Chris Perry, anything from Shoots 911? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, nothing directly pertinent, uh, but if you haven't signed up for a Shoots Alerts, uh, please do so at our website, 911's uh, website. Uh, it's busy, busy here at 911. Uh, I'm sure you've seen lots of uh, law enforcement activity and fire activity in the area, so we're, um, we're it's keeping us hopping. But uh, no major updates, but please sign up for emergency alerts if you haven't done so at our website. Great, thanks, Chris. DJ, I can imagine you might have a, a bit of an update for us on what's going on with the federal lands. Doug, are you there? There you are. Great. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah, we have a little bit of an update. Uh, we've uh, responded to over 40 uh, fires over the past three days, uh, three or four days, uh, with the lightning coming in. Um, we have uh, three fires that we're uh, continually uh, having to work on right now. Uh, the rest of them are in, in you know, pretty small and, and have contained those. Uh, the fires continue to come in. Uh, and uh, so that 40 number is kind of a moving target, but uh, that's uh, close to what we've had over the past few days. Um, we've got three fires that I'll mention, the Green Ridge Fire, which is uh, up by Camp Sherman, uh, that uh, is currently 26 acres, uh, did roll out a little more on that steep slope uh, on Green Ridge yesterday, last night. Um, 
uh, but we do have a type three team on that. And it's about 26 acres, like I said. Uh, the other fire uh, on the uh, Deschutes side anyway is the Lily Fire, uh, which is up by Lily Lake. Uh, and it's approximately 20 acres uh, this morning. It's in the old Charlton fire scar uh, burn and we've got some smoke jumpers up there. Uh, we actually had a, 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 a jumping accident uh, up there last night. Uh, one of the jumpers got hung in a tree and then fell to the ground. Uh, they were life flighted uh, thanks to the help uh, uh, from our, our local life flight folks uh, into St. Charles. Um, they were given an MRI and admitted to the hospital and that's all we know right now as far as uh, that patient. Uh, but I uh, do want to say thanks to uh, uh, our Deschutes County Emergency Services Coordinator. Uh, Nathan uh, helped us out uh, to start putting in place some plans. Uh, in case life flight couldn't land because of the uh, lack of light that was going on last night. Uh, so uh, ended up, it uh, took us about an hour and 15 minutes uh, from the time of the accident to get them uh, to definitive care at the hospital. So uh, really good effort by everybody. Uh, and uh, I know uh, thanks goes out to Nathan and his search and rescue group and, and uh, Deschutes County for helping us with that. Also put in place in that time, uh, uh, an opportunity uh, with the Joint Operations Center out of Salem uh, to have a, another helicopter in case uh, life flight couldn't uh, uh, help us uh, last night. So uh, very thankful uh, for the help there. Uh, it's just a dangerous job that we do um, and uh, wanted to uh, extend our thanks to uh, the cooperation that we've had uh, from folks uh, during that accident last night. So with that, uh, nationally, we're at preparedness level four. Uh, and if, just as a reminder, that's a scale of one to five. And it's, a, it's a, uh, uh, determined by the number of resources that are available, uh, with uh, five meaning that their resources are very scarce across the nation. Uh, and uh, regionally, we are at preparedness level three. Um, Resources are starting to get stretched thin. There's uh, several fires across the region. And when I'm talking about the region, I'm talking about Oregon and Washington. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> there have been several, uh, three uh, incident management teams deployed in the last couple of days uh, with more expected into the future. Uh, so fire season's here uh, in central Oregon and across uh, the Northwest and uh, we're starting to respond to uh, large fires uh, across the Northwest. And that's why we do all the prescribed fire stuff that Alex was talking about uh, earlier uh, to help protect our communities uh, from these fires uh, that we undoubtedly will have uh, when we live in a fire, fire dependent ecosystem. So um, that's, uh, that's about all I have, Ed, unless there are questions. Great, thank you. Thank you. Pause just briefly for any questions for DJ. Okay, we'll move on to David Mormon. Good morning, a uh, report from the American Red Cross. Uh, last couple of meetings I've talked about our planning for sheltering in a COVID environment and trying to emphasize uh, non-congregate shelter strategies. We had a couple of chances to implement that this week, both on the Mosier fire and then on the Juniper Ridge fire here closer to home. and. Uh, on Juniper Ridge, uh, it was kind of interesting, a learning process, I think, for everybody. We worked closely with Nathan as that was a rapidly moving incident. I think there were several hundred homes in the evacuation area at one point. We set up an initial uh, temporary evacuation point at Lava Ridge uh, Elementary School right along Cooley Road. Uh, after a while, we determined that maybe it was wiser to move a little bit further south because of the smoke coming from the uh, wrecking yard not being very healthy for the folks standing there. So we relocated to the uh, Catholic Church along uh, 27th Street. And later in the evening, I think we had probably at least 25 households and probably 65 or 70 people congregating there, kind of awaiting uh, what was going to happen with the fire and with the evacuation levels. Uh, toward midnight, those uh, evacuation uh, alerts began to relax uh, below level three and many of those individuals were able and households were able to return home. And then, uh, but we did end up with uh, some level three evacuation uh, uh, staying in effect overnight. 
At that point, we, we were hoping our original plan was to utilize motel rooms for non-congregate sheltering. But as you might expect on a Saturday night in Bend in August, there are no motel rooms. So we went to plan B and we worked with the school district to quickly open up some classrooms across the street from the Catholic Church at uh, Mountain View High School. And we had five uh, uh, clients stay overnight uh, with us providing uh, support to them uh, until those level th final level three evacuation notices were lifted uh, the following morning. So it was a rapid uh, learning process for us. Uh, a lot of moving parts going on during just a few hours. We will be doing a debrief on Thursday evening within the Red Cross. So if anybody has any insights on how that experience went and would like to forward that information on to us, I'd be happy to carry it into our debrief. That's it for me. Great. Thanks, David. Nice to have a maybe a short incident to uh, learn from rather than an extended one for, for a first, first try or two. Um, yeah. Amazing job done by the firefighters on that one to keep it away from uh, very, very nearby uh, dwellings. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. All right, uh, Aaron with uh, SWCD, thanks for joining us. Hi everyone. I don't have any updates today. I was just sitting in on the meeting. Okay. Um, all right, we'll move down to uh, Georgia then, Rigid Eagle Crest. I have nothing to report today, thank you. Um, Jeff with Ben Parks. Hi there, not much to report. We had a couple trees come down on, on during Sunday storm and uh, we had trail blocked at Shevlin Park. And we were able to clear that using a crosscut saw to reduce the fire risk. Um, that's all. All right, well, geez, we're moving through these updates. Um, <laughs> how about uh, Jessica, Jessica LaBerge? Hi, good morning. Um, I, I don't really have any updates this morning, but thanks so much. Great, thanks for joining us. Uh, how about Lars with uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, Lars here. Uh, not a whole lot to report on other than, uh, like Alex mentioned during his uh, presentation, uh, we continue work on developing an RCPP proposal, or um, I'm sorry, a Joint Chiefs proposal. Um, and uh, so looking forward to hopefully finalizing that and uh, submitting that in, uh, sometime in October. And so stay tuned for more, I guess, information as that develops. Uh, the other thing too, I've been kind of working with with Todd Peplin from the Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, we're we're kind of uh, brainstorming some ideas on a success story related to some forestry work done uh, kind of in the south part of the county. So um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully we'll have a, a good success story to share with the group uh, again sometime this fall. So that's all I had, thanks. Great, thanks Lars. Uh, heard from Nick that he doesn't have any uh, updates at this time. How about Oliver? Yeah, hey, um, so Boone and I have continued to try to strategize how we can reach uh, the people in the Sundance neighborhood, which does not have a homeowners association, or uh, to start uh, building support for a FireWise program. Our strategy right now is uh, we're working on a letter that we're just going to send directly to residents. And so it was really helpful to learn this morning from Alex that uh, there's going to be a prescribed burn next year in Cabin Butte, which is right out my <laughs> back door. Uh, so that might be a good, uh, a good motivating uh, factor to help people rally around the idea that we really do need to even though this neighborhood burned 25 years ago in the skeleton fire, it's right to burn again and we need to prepare against that. So that's all I got. Thanks Oliver. Um, Peter Gatowski with Deschutes County Community Development. Good morning everybody. Um, it's been a few years since I've had the pleasure of engaging Project Wildfire um, in my role as a planning manager. Just two quick announcements knowing that we're running up against the nine o'clock. Uh, conclusion of the meeting. First is many of you uh, interacted with Zechariah Heck, uh, an associate planner 
uh, here at the community, de community Development Department. He took a, a position with the Oregon Department of Transportation and just wanted to let the group know that Kyle Collins, uh, an associate planner here in our office, will um, basically assume those roles and responsibilities and liaison, uh, you know, contacts with Project Wildfire. He's on vacation now, or else I would introduce you to him, that he'll start participating in September. And then very quickly, I just want to let the group know that uh, Deschutes County's Community Development Department has uh, hired a uh, team from the University of Oregon, uh, from the Institute of Policy Research and Engagement, who will uh, be engaging, I think, some members of Project Wildfire to understand uh, the best ways to involve your group or your organization ultimately to receive feedback on a project pertaining to uh, Deschutes County's wildfire uh, hazard map and to gauge basically community sentiment on uh, the support for uh, looking at uh, strengthening Deschutes County's building codes as they apply to hardening buildings in wildfire areas, wildfire ur urban interface areas, as well as just the general uh, appetite for strengthening land use provisions dealing with defensible space. And all this is coming out of a uh, mitigation advisory committee that Ed and others were on uh, in the fall of 2019, just to kind of gauge uh, the community's sentiment again on these types of provisions in light of you know, our annual challenges of, uh, you know, dealing with the threat of wildfire. So um, at the end, so, so some members will be, be reaching out to, to a subset of Project Wildfire. Ultimately, I think when we engage in a community uh, uh, process, knowing that we're in COVID, we're going to use an assortment of tools anticipated for October and into November, and we would certainly value everybody's input uh, as, represent, as representatives on Project Wildfire and any other context you may have. So uh, we'll provide more information as we get into the fall, but just wanted to plant a seed uh, to this group uh, that we're really interested in your feedback on, on these important topics. So thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Rick Gretzman, anything to, to share today? Thank you. Um, I'm here at Trout Creek Village in lovely Sisters, Oregon. Actually, it's really ugly. You're from out of state. I always tell everybody it's horrible here. Well, our community has become FireRise recognized, and I'm trying to draft a letter to send to the residents to say, hey, welcome to your new FireWise neighborhood. I was wondering if anybody has any similar letters to that to kind of introduce that we are now FireWise recognized to the residents. And if you do have some type of sample, I would love to get my hands on it. Yeah, we, uh, Rick, thanks for that. Yeah, we, um, we've we been uh, looking for that, including uh, even reaching out nationally to the National Fire Protection Association. Surprisingly, haven't been able to track down anything quite yet. But uh, if, we, if we run across anything or, or folks on the in the meeting uh, have anything be sure to send it my way or Boone's way and we'll we'll pass that on if not we'll we may be working on a, a template with your rec Rick that can then be shared with other new communities as they they come on board because we've got a lot of them in the queue as I mentioned earlier in the meeting so okay uh, moving on to Todd then anything to share uh, also from the SWCD yeah, just uh, real quick, I'm just going to reiterate uh, what Lars was saying, the Deschutes SWCD, we're working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with NRCS um, and uh, figuring out what we can do to help out the cause with um, the two chiefs initiative so uh, we can get a lot of landowner participation and all, and it's been really exciting working with both Lars and Alex on this. Um, the other thing, too, is just in, um, oh, about a month ago or so, I met with ODF and, um, and Boone 
and to talk about some more activities uh, that we could get involved in in South County. And um, we're kind of brainstorming a few things that could help out with uh, some of those areas, those tenacious areas, if you will, that, you know, can't, uh, that, that probably would need uh, a little bit more help in fuels reduction. And that's pretty much about it. Great, thank you. Bob Poley, anything for Mountain High? Thank you, sorry I had to unmute. Uh, I've got three things quickly. Uh, you probably noticed in the Sunday paper, the Bin Bulletin, that they were talking about the irrigation water being cut off. I think most people think it's, that's the farms out by Madras and so forth, but actually it's a lot of subdivisions within the Bend area, mine included at Mountain High. Um, anything served by Rotes Water, which gets their irrigation water from the Arnold Irrigation District. Uh, we were cut off on Sunday morning or Saturday morning the pump was turned off. <clears throat> they don't expect to have irrigation water to us for another month, perhaps mid-September if everything works out. Uh, so we have all these beautiful green lawns that are turning brown and that's gonna increase our risk of fire danger, uh, especially, especially fire, uh, ground-based fire uh, moving. So, uh, that's one very big concern of all these subdivisions that are, that are uh, serviced by Rhodes Water. Uh, second thing is, I got new, good news. Uh, our homeowners annual meeting, which was scheduled for May, uh, but postponed due to COVID is actually gonna happen on uh, September 13th. And Boone is gonna be our guest speaker to talk about FireWise and uh, fire, fire Adapted Communities. And that will take place by our gazebo out on the lawn area with folding chairs and lots of uh, good distancing. So that happens on Sunday, the 13th of September. And the last thing is we now have a <clears throat> fairly permanent uh, firewise display in our pool house or our uh, swimming pool uh, house so that uh, anybody that's going swimming in our neighborhood uh, will pass by a big firewise poster with all sorts of contact information on it. So that's all I have. Thank you, Ed. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Commissioner DeBone, anything to share? Uh, yes, good morning, everybody. Um, so a couple things. BLM, we got a letter, uh, as commissioners, we got a letter from BLM talking about a uh, Steelhead Falls fuel reduction effort. I don't know if that's come up here. I did miss the first part of the meeting. But we wrote a letter of support for getting the project, uh, you know, down the road. So this is kind of an evaluation by BLM, thousand uh, something acres, thousand thirty one acres. It's kind of west side of um, the river, I guess, or west side of Quicker River Ranch. Um, so yeah, just something for people to kind of hear. If you're interested in that, you could uh, provide a letter. It's an open public process right now. So that was just one thing that had come across my desk. Uh, I think I always say this, but this is a reminder, uh, you know, just defensible space sharing with uh, folks around you. Uh, and this is what we're all here for. But, uh, you know, the vision I have is that that ember shower, uh, my wife and I, about a dozen or 13, 14, 15 years ago, we had a park fire in Lapine State Park, and we had nickel size embers coming down in our yard and on our roof uh, and it was three quarters or a mile away so we've seen that we've experienced it so just for people to understand uh, and um, that's what you need to envision you know is some some hot embers raining from the sky possibly very slowly so and I'm not here to scare anybody I'm just saying that's the vision uh, you know looking at the gutters uh, uh, defensible space in the bushes just the basics that we all know but sharing that in that uh, with your neighbors and friends that you uh, um, you know, involved in. And then I do think we are on a big push. Uh, community members are going to get very engaged. Uh, Firewise, we, we're probably coming into a cycle because we've got a lot of new residents that are, uh, you know, coming in from uh, larger cities. Some of the rural properties are being uh, purchased and developed or at least, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, somebody's spending a couple weeks on them in the summertime if they're not moving here right now. So we're going to be in a great spot to share this information with new people. So let's just all, uh, you know, take it as it is and uh, use the resources, uh, you know, Boone and Ed, 
uh, we've, we've really got some great folks that can help uh, and all the other folks on this call. So as I say, the more work to be done. And uh, yeah, I really like the idea of Firewise Communities. I think I might've said this before too, but we had a community meeting plan in our neighborhood, COVID hit and we just backed off. So just like this uh, homeowners association meeting was discussed, we kind of need to get rescheduled. So it's been a wild ride for six months almost. Thank you. Great, thanks, Tony. And then I do have two uh, uh, people calling in by phone. I'm just gonna list your number and see if you have a an update if you could also introduce yourself. Uh, I've got a 562-533-0741 uh, and it's star six from a phone, I think, to unmute yourself. Just give you a second, see if you have an update. Uh, I'd also take it uh, if you're nine one six seven six five six three seven eight. If you hit star six and want to share an update, I'll give you just a minute to to do that. Um, otherwise, I think um, if I missed anybody, be sure to also come off mute and just let me know. But, uh, yeah. Oh, the nine one six number. You were off mute and then you muted again. Uh, there you go. Okay, uh, yeah, this is Greg Bryant from Deschutes River Woods. Okay. And I haven't got anything to respond to, but we were going to have an annual meeting, but because of COVID, we had a, had to uh, postpone it, uh, and we haven't got it set another date for that yet, so. And other than that, we uh, I'll be contacting our, our people on the defensible space probably within a month or so, so that's all I have. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Okay, uh, I guess with that, we've come to the end of our updates. Thanks folks for joining in today. And thanks to Alex, especially for uh, the presentation on prescribed fire. Uh, just a reminder uh, that we did re I did record the meeting and uh, we'll get that out as soon as uh, that's uh, available. We'll send out a link with a draft uh, minute. So thanks everybody. And we'll see you back here in September. <laughs>